we thought it was about time we gave you a tour of our brand new narrowboat. Yeah, so I know some of you will have seen it at Crick. Um, some of you will have seen it on other people's vlogs at Crick. But we thought we'd give you a personal tour. Now our, all our stuff's on board and you can see it sort of lived in. Yeah, we've been on for a few weeks, haven't we? We've been getting used to a few things because it's different than our other boat. It is, a lot, yeah. lot different to be honest. But if you're new to the channel, I'm Paul. My name's Anthony. And our dog Dexter is just down here chilling in the shade. Yeah, but bless him. It's been really warm, hasn't it? It has, yeah, really hot. And that's another reason we couldn't do the tour. It was just too hot to clean and get the boat looking nice. But I was just too exhausted. <laughs> anyway, this is a 60 foot a uh, semi-cruiser stern narrowboat from Oakham's Narrowboat in Derbyshire and it's a bit different than your traditional narrowboat because it's hybrid electric propulsion isn't it? It is, so it's a what they call a serial hybrid so it means that um, rather than having two types of propulsion we just have a single propulsion of an electric motor with a backup diesel generator and a huge bank of lithium batteries which we'll talk about later. Yeah. So starting on the outside, we've got nearly two kilowatts of solar. It's 1.935 kilowatts, isn't it? Is, it is, to be yeah. exact. Yeah. We've got two huge skylights that are just over two metres each skylight. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. And we've, uh, that's starting on the outside. We've got a cratch cover and a pram cover. But I think I'll grab the camera and uh, you can explain everything to the viewers, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. So those that have been following us for a while will remember um, our previous boat. Um, so the bow is very different on this one. It's a bit more stubby. Um, the last one was a, a Joshua bow, which is a bit more sort of swept upwards. Um, the advantage of this boat's shell, the brum base, is that it's got quite straight sides, so it makes it look bigger inside, which you'll see later. So this is the bow of the boat, um, and this is actually where most people access their bow locker. Um, this is just decorative on this one. So we access our bow locker internally, which to be honest is, is just brilliant because um, I think I've mentioned before when we actually stored gas in here that because of my height, I used to lift up, but I actually physically couldn't get it any higher because I'm so short. So everything's accessed inside. Um, it's a huge amount of storage, um, but it does make it more accessible trying to rummage around that little square space. So that's a definite plus for this. I, I think that's a brilliant idea. Um, we also went for, and something that we didn't think we would do, um, and Liam sort of directed in that um, sort of way really, is these, these covers are a lot lighter than we had on the previous boat. Our, our ones were black. Um, but his argument, and actually it's really true, <coughs> is if you're using this as an internal space and you want to sit in there, it does make that space lighter. Um, and touch wood, they haven't got as dirty as we thought they would. I mean, we've only been on a couple of weeks, but um, we, we, we were scared that it'd get really dirty, but actually and that's not happened. you can unzip the windows, can't you? You can take the oh yeah, the so window. inside, I'm not going to do it now because it's a bit of a faff, but inside, we can. these are actually um, privacy covers that are attached. So we have them at the here and either side. So at night, because we've got glass in the bow doors, which were the solid metal on the last ones, um, it's not going to let light in when you're trying to sleep. So that, that's really good as well. Heading up onto the roof, uh, you can see we've actually got a, a square LED tunnel light. So when you're navigating through tunnels, hence the name, um, LED, low power, really bright. Uh, and then you can see the huge array of solar panels we've got. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a further two in the middle of the skylights. These panels are actually, conventionally, it's like um, two, two bus bar, I think, two to five. These are nine um, with two MPPT controllers, which you'll see inside. That just makes the, the um, panels sort of more efficient, the transfer of light to electricity. It just makes that more efficient. So we've gone for privacy glass. Um, although it can make interior look a bit dark, we've got these, as we mentioned before, these huge skylights that just floods the boat with light. Um, they're, they're brilliant to let breeze through, so they're actually going in opposite directions. So if there's a breeze like there is today, you can actually feel a breeze going through the boat. Without a breeze, I'm going to admit, it does make the boat quite hot. We're awaiting covers. Um, when we get them, we can use them on top um, and it'll cool the boat. But they're brilliant, especially for Paul, who like does his artwork on the boat. Just natural light flooding, flooding through. So we might have mentioned this before, but Paul and I are huge Star Wars fans. And one of our favourite um, series that they've done recently is Mandalorian. So this is just a little nod to the Mandalorian. And actually, it's, it sort of goes with our 
ethos of sort of electric boat and the lifestyle, we truly believe this is the way. So uh, yeah, that's why we had that put on. So we actually had this um, boat sign written um, by Rob Wag. He's done an absolutely stunning job. Um, we watched him do that and I think if you look on a previous, um, one of our previous vlogs you'll see him do that. Such a skill. Um, and he took our logo which wouldn't quite fit the whole of it and just took the key elements of it. So um, I think he's done a superb job. And then we come to the stern of the boat. You've got this huge um, pram cover. And again, like I was saying before, it actually makes the interior really light, but it's such a massive social area. Um, if you come inside and you'll see. So as you can see, it's huge. And it's actually a lot higher as well for me. So not that particularly that high, but for like Paul particularly, um, it's a great social area. We have bought um, like a little leg. We just need to source a table to go in here. You could see easily. I reckon eight people at a Porsche maybe. Um, but yeah, it's absolutely huge. It's nine foot this area. And then we've got, we've got the control here, for the throttle. Um, we've got, on this boat, we've got bow and stern thrusters and they all sorts of combinations with them. So you can have it so this, the bow and the stern on opposite sides, so it spins the boat round on its axis. You can link so it pushes the uh, bolt into the bank if you want some more um, and they're really powerful like um, we tested them out didn't we and I don't think it's got quite the limit that most bow thrusters have because obviously we mentioned the bolt's electric um, a lot of bolts rely on you can do it five seconds and you have to take it off and I'm pretty sure this one isn't or that's what we're led to believe so we've got gas lockers either side um, on this boat because we're totally gasless and coalless we don't need to store gas um, it means that my Brompton bike um, can go in there, it's all locked, you can attach it and a chain around it, so it's really secure. They've even put an external plug socket so I can charge it outside as well. Liam even came up with this, which is brilliant, if I can get in. So it's a dog shower um, for Dexter. It's actually, you can have it cold or hot um, using that, and you turn it, it's, it's really good. Um, and I can also um, wash my bike with it as well, brilliant. So we've even got keyless entry, there's a couple of ways in, you can use your thumb, these plastic fobs, or you can actually type in a code. Uh, you can also, if friends come to your boat and they need to get in and you're not on, request a code so you can do it via your phone and then they can just get into the boat. So it works like this and then it just unlocks it. The steps are quite clever because uh, we explained to Liam that we've got an elderly dog and elderly parents and the steps previously were too steep. He's made these steps that pull out and slide back and go out of the way but we'll show you how that works later and this is our shoe cupboard. We keep all of Dexter's towels up here and shoes in there and there's a little handy drawer as well where we keep our waterproofs, bits and pieces that we need for the boat. Junk basically junk <laughs> no it's not stuff that you need that's handy because if you're up on the stern and it starts raining you can just reach in and grab your waterproofs from here and then there are the steps that pull out this is what we call the mud room so we can hang our jackets here we can sit there to put our boots on also got these three drawers which are really good i shall push this step in Keep all my camera gear and art supplies in these drawers and it's so handy to have all my prints and envelopes ready to send off to customers really love that and we've got this tall cupboard which is basically this is like our utility room we've got this tall cupboard and in here is the washing machine and we've got all our bits and pieces that you'd normally keep under the sink kitchen roll washing capsules cleaning products that kind of thing and then another door which closes off this room that I really like because then it feels like you're cut off from the engine room and it feels more like a home when you're inside the boat. We've got uh, granite worktops, uh, plenty of drawers for cutlery which we didn't have before, um, storage boxes, pans, that kind of thing. We've got an under the counter dishwasher which is really useful as well because we think that probably saves water.
induction hob. It's only a two burner hob, but the oven can steam vegetables and that kind of thing as well. We've gone for a reverse layout, which basically means instead of your traditional layout where you walk through the bedroom, you walk down the steps into the mudroom and then into your kitchen or your galley. Then you've got your dining room or your dinette. Then you've got your saloon, which is your living room then into the bathroom and then into the bedroom. And we just feel that this work, this layout really works for us. We wanted to splash back something that was different than previously. They've done mirrors and they've done tiles and we wanted something different and to reflect nature. And we found this, it's copper and we think it looks stunning. And it also reminds us, uh, it's like an aerial shot of the coral reef weed thing. And over time that will change color. Lots of chrome switches, um, chrome plug sockets, USB chargers, there's lots of those all over the boat. And one thing that we love in the evenings is the subtle lighting. So there are a lot of uh, undergunnel light. We really like these undergunnel cupboards because um, Liam's designed these. In there, we've got all the little knickknacks, things like uh, small paints, watercolors, um, tape measures, uh, the stuff that I use for my art really, which are things like cotton buds and stuff, and plenty of room for my uh, paper that I draw and paint on. <laughs> Sorry, you can hear sheep in the background. It's nice thing about being out in the countryside. Uh, they're really useful. We find those really good. Oh, and another thing that I nearly forgot, uh, under the, the actual kickboards, under the cupboards, they're all drawers. That's really useful. Um, yeah, and all of these pull out all the way. So, yeah, really useful. We love this Echo Show on the wall because not only does it look cool and we do like our gadgets and we've got the power to keep it going. Uh, we can add uh, notes on there, reminders, shopping lists. It's got our calendar on there and our diary and explain, it shows you the weather and the temperature as well. well. One of the main reasons we got that was so I, when I'm cooking, you can have like an online recipe on there, can't you? Yeah, yeah. Which is brilliant. And you can watch videos on there as well, <laughs> can't you? Oh, look, chorizo, poo bags. That's nice. That's Fabulous, I'm not cooking that. <laughs> Create art, walk Dexter, exercise. I've done all of those apart from exercise. And we really love this granite worktop because it's not a massive space in a kitchen on a narrow boat, but we feel that you've got a bit of extra workspace there, haven't you? Yeah. And the drainage grooves that go into a one and a half bowl sink, which is good for, you know, we didn't have a one and a half bowl sink on the last boat. And a really nice mixer tap. Oh, and talking of taps, we've also got a thousand litre water tank, which is just massive. And that should last us about three weeks. We've got a 230 volt fridge with a small freezer compartment under the counter, which is just ideal really for two people living on a narrow boat. Microwave, uh, plenty of cupboards for cups and glasses, plates and dishes, that kind of thing. And then you come to the dinette. The look of the boat to us is more like a, a small house or an apartment and we wanted this, we wanted a, a nice light feature that was a central feature. So this is a, a again a 230 volt, is that right Anthony? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Light feature which is really nice. Um, solid oak tabletop. We really like this, Liam had this designed and it's um, what is that called? Like a resin insert. <laughs> yeah, like a resin insert. But on a sunny day, it really shows the blue light on the floor and it looks stunning. It's almost like you've got neon lights. The fabric we chose ourselves, these are really comfy and the cushions do lift off and inside there is plenty of storage. And under that side, we've got a little freezer, which is miles more than we had on the last boat. These brush steel radiators, we think look really nice. And then you've got your duck hatch on this side and we've only got one duck hatch on this boat. On our previous boat, we had a duck hatch on each side. The problem is it's very dark because now we've got a nice big window on that side. Yeah, it's just lovely. Let's all the air in. Perhaps we should leave that open, I think. <laughs> and then coming into the living room or the saloon. Oh, I should mention that under the dinette, uh, there's a cupboard. It's almost like a step. The wood lifts up and you can keep your paperwork and things in there. We've got tons of stuff in there. But it's also got a drawer, hasn't it, the front of it? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, plenty of deep storage in there. Again, undergunnel cupboards that Liam designed. And he asked me what I kept my pencils in. Previously, it was jars, so he's even had these glasses done with the Oakham's logo on and I can keep all my coloured pencils and most of my drawing stuff is kept in there which is good and it's hidden out of the way it looks nice and neat 
The skylights give plenty of natural light, which we absolutely love. You get up in the morning and the boat's flooded with light, which is really unusual for a narrow boat. It's great for me because I'm drawing, and it also lifts your mood because you're not in a dark tube, basically. And yeah, uh, we got this copper behind the fire. We went for a diesel reflex stove, and the reason we went for this is because it's a cleaner fuel for us than having coal, logs, kindling, and fire lighters. We don't have to clean the fire out, and the heat can be regulated. So the diesel reflex, we absolutely love. In a house, one thing that I really loved was lots of plants, and we couldn't have it on the last boat because it was quite dark, so we, just, we thought it'd be really nice to have a living wall. And this is really clever because there's a little tap that lifts off at the top, and you fill that with water, and it's a self-watering frame, really. That water lasts about a week to 10 days, depending on the temperature inside the boat. And there's a membrane at the back that soaks up the water and keeps all the plants watered. And you can see it's doing really well. Liam designed this sofa bed for us, so it does pull out into a bed. It's very comfortable, and it easily sits three people. And also the storage under this as well. So there's gas struts and plenty of storage underneath. We've got our 42 inch TV that we had in the house and our sound bar, little cupboards under here for storing things as well. There's all sorts in there. And we put this little shelf in our cells because it's nice when you sat there, you've got somewhere to put your glass of wine uh, or your remote for the TV can go on there. And again, like we mentioned, double glazing and these blinds. And there are little magnets that stick to the wall and then hold the blinds in place. Because the wind, window's open. <laughs> the windows do lift out, so if it does get really hot on the boat, you can completely lift those out and it's quite easy to do. Bathroom's compact, but let's be honest, we don't spend a lot of time in a bathroom on a narrow boat. Uh, really like the mirrors on the doors, because again, that gives you that feeling of space. Um, the brushed steel radiators, lots of under storage, under gunnel storage for bathroom, bits and pieces. And we've got a waterfall shower and real tiles, which is something that we really wanted. And we've got a really nice basin, really nice tap, and we went for a compost toilet from Compost, who are a really good company. And we just think that's the best solution for us. It's a big discussion with boaters, isn't it, toilets? But yeah, compost toilet, we think, or a separator toilet is the way for us. And oh, oak floor all the way throughout, we've got solid oak floor. Love the porthole window in the bathroom. And these lights above um, are all touch sensitive. So yeah, like those. And you can actually dial down the light as well. You can just have that subtle lighting. And then into the bedroom, as you can see, we've got a really comfy headboard, which we love. Uh, lots of under gunner lighting, which is really nice in an evening. In fact, to have that on all through the boat, it just looks lovely and it makes the boat look and feel much bigger. Now this bed pulls out into a king size bed, which is something we really wanted. And there's lots of storage underneath. You can lift this up and it's on gas struts. And you can see there's plenty of storage under there. And I thought it was gonna be a real faff to make this bed every night, but it only takes a minute, doesn't it? Pull this out. That flips over. And there you go, one very comfortable king size bed. And it's such a luxury to have a king size bed on a narrow boat. We love it. And there's still store, you st there's still room down the side as well for Dexter to get past if he wants to sleep at the bottom of the bed. We've got a storage cupboard in the corner, which is quite handy. And again, under gunnel storage there. And two wardrobes, which is really good for us. And plenty of room for hanging clothes, plenty of shelves and a pull-out drawer as well. And you might want to get a bit closer to this. We've got um, a tall, slim cupboard here where we keep all our towels, clean towels. We've got an ironing board and we even keep a hoover in there and it's plugged in uh, because there's a plug in there so you can keep it as a cordless hoover that you can keep charged. And then the same on this side, 
and then trust Anthony because he's smaller than me and I end up with a smaller wardrobe but again plenty of shelves plenty of storage for clothes hanging clothes and also socks and underwear that kind of thing in the drawer under the steps is the water pump and it's a lot quieter on this boat than our last boat and there's a bit of storage under there as well but it's really nice having double glazed doors right outside where you can see right down the canal we love that And the bow doors are open up so you can see straight down the canal and it's lovely when it's a really hot sunny evening to have these open and if you've got the covers down it's such a nice view down the canal and the seating on this side as well so lockers quite a lot of storage in there we've got our chairs and stuff and a seat for sitting out and relaxing in the evening with a glass of wine, which we never do, but we should do more often. <laughs> we do. We've got Google devices all over the boat as well, so we can listen to music in all of the rooms. I love listening to my music while getting a shower in the morning. And again, plenty of plug sockets and USB sockets. Well, before I jump into the engine bay, Anthony, you're going to explain about the lithium batteries, aren't you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you sound confident. Just because every time we like jokingly say with Pete and Caroline, battery talk, and then Caroline just glazes over. But do you want to demonstrate the steps as well? Yeah, so we've already pushed the bottom one in, <clears throat> and then this just pushes in like that. In this cupboard, you've got full access to your lithium batteries. They're um, what they're called live pole batteries, so that's lithium ion phosphates. Uh, they're the safest ones. I know there's massive controversy about lithium batteries. Most people think about the ones that are on your mobile phone, which these aren't the same. Um, we have four 200 amp hour batteries, so a huge bank of 800 amp hours. Each battery has its own BMS, and each battery talks to, its, to each other. Um, so they balance. Um, the top one's the main battery, and the rest of them are auxiliary batteries. Um, but they're absolutely huge, and they were specially customised um, for Oakham's, they had them specially customised and they look really, I think they look quite sexy actually. And then as an example, we did a four and a half hour cruise a couple of weeks ago on a hot sunny day and we used about 10% battery, is that right? Yeah, but we're in eco mode as well, so there's two modes on the boat. You can actually use some called eco mode so it doesn't use as much power. Um, so as well as the batteries, we've also, in this cupboard, is a huge eight kilowatt inverter. So it's um, Victron and it's a Quattro. Um, we need such a large inverter because like I said before, everything is gasless. So our oven and the um, induction hob all run off electric. Um, so we need that amount of, um, amount of inverter, sort of that size of inverter, if you like. Yeah. I know that we've got two MPPT controllers for the solar panels. Did I say that right? You did. <laughs> so again, that's that sort of makes it more efficient each bank of solar has its um, own MPPT controller so as well as being a nine bus bar and these makes it really efficient solar panels aren't massively efficient to start with I think they're about sort of between 25 and 30 percent efficient anyway um, but this just helps it along um, we have a panel up here that tells you what's going on and we can also see this on our app on our phone so at the moment the battery is at 79 percent we're only using 97 watts but we're generating in the region of 850 watts of solar, um, which is just max. So we're actually outstripping, we're, the input's outstripping our um, output. It, it is amazing. It's, uh, we've not been really around the generator much at all, have we, to top that battery up? Yeah. Well, I've had such fabulous weather. And can you explain about the diesel generator for people that don't know? It's a hybrid system, isn't it? Yeah, so um, we're solely propelled by an electric motor. Um, we don't have a, 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 a diesel engine where that would be like a parallel hybrid so I was a serial hybrid um, so it uses the batteries when we when we cruise um, but to top them batteries up if the solar isn't doing that work for us we have a backup diesel generator I think it's six kilovolts I may be wrong keep like I may be corrected with that but I'm pretty sure it's six kilovolt um, backup diesel generator but I can't I reckon we'll half our diesel consumption to if we just had a standard diesel engine uh, yeah it's very quiet well, isn't portrait, it? portrait actually not half i think we'll yeah. portrait well i'm going to show you a shot now of me starting up the engine on our last boat 
and then I'm going to show Anthony switching on the motor on this boat. And that's it, isn't it? Yeah, it's really bizarre, isn't it? You expect it to make some sort of noise. So the first time we turned that key, we didn't think it was working, did we? No. Because we're used to the engine revving up. So this is the Victron Quattro 8,000 uh, 8, watt inverter, or 8 kilowatt. Um, they're the MPPT controllers. Can we just stress, that's not our boat making that noise. No. There's a, a boat going past, isn't there? These are the fuse boxes. And there's another one above it. And then down here um, controls our heating, um, which incidentally, actually, we've got to mention. So um, on this boat, we can actually control it via um, Nest. Um, so if we're away and we're coming back from holiday and we think, oh, it's getting a bit cold, we can actually set the heating to come on before we get home. Um, it's really controllable. Um, hot water and heat can be controlled from your app on your phone. Um, as well and as like the thermostat that we've got the Nest thermostat. And it's a Webasto heating system, isn't it? It is. So it's, I mean, it's just another brand of um, diesel heater. So on the previous boat, we had an um, Ebus patcher. On this, we've got Webasto. Um, apparently, I don't know whether it's true, but Webasto is supposed to be a bit more robust. Um, we actually had our Ebus patcher replaced on the last boat, didn't we? And we'd only been on it two and a half years. So mm. fingers crossed, this one is more ro robust than that. So can you explain to me as well how the central heating works? So it works either by um, immersion, which can be controlled from the Nest app. So that, the immersion will purely to heat your hot water, or if you wanted heat, you would have to turn your Webasto on, so, which would secondary give you hot water as well. So it's a diesel heater for heat and additional hot water, or just your immersion for hot water alone. Well, I'm down in the engine bay, and normally you wouldn't be able to stand here because you'd have a massive diesel engine, which is what we had on our last boat. But on this boat, we've got an E-Line O-Drive motor from Vitas. Is that right, Anthony? That's correct, yeah. Right, yeah. And we've also got, as Anthony said earlier, a diesel generator, which tops up our batteries when we need extra power, and we've not got that power from solar. Well, that's the tour of the boat, isn't it? It is. I hope you enjoyed looking around our home. Um, we love it, don't we? Yeah, I was just going to say, we're, ab we're absolutely loving it. It's, um, there's been little things like snags, which you always get with any new new builds, mm. um, and they've pretty much been sorted now. I think Liam's coming back tomorrow to do some last minute things. Yeah, it was just before, it was such a rush to get the boat ready for the show. We had to do some things like it hadn't fit a fan, and quite a few people at the Crick Boat Show noticed there's no extractor fan in the bathroom, but he came yeah. back and did but that. But the plan was, the show, there was a plan he? to do that, just yeah. uh, it was just time constraints, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, we, we're getting used to it. We, we're still struggling to find things that we put away because well, we I'm had help with things being put away. We <laughs> kept having to ask Caroline where things were. Um, but yeah, we absolutely love it. We love the light flooding through. You can see how much lighter it is mm. compared to the last boat. Yeah. I wasn't sure about the colour of the boat, but now I'm growing to love it. And especially when the boat's outside in its natural surroundings with grasses and fields around it and trees. It blends in, doesn't it? it? Yeah, it, it looks... It does we'll look like yeah. totally at home in its own habitat. Yeah. We'll show you a quick clip of one of our videos and all you can see is our reflection and the roof line of the boat really, yeah. isn't it? It's mad. And so, you know, we, we know we've been really lucky to own two beautiful boats. Like our last boat we absolutely loved. She gave us loads of adventures and yeah. we know it's gone to a good home because uh, we keep seeing posts from um, Kevin. Kevin. Yeah. I want to say Nigel, Kevin yeah. as well. Um, but we absolutely love this, this boat. Um, they've done a superb job. Mm. Um, yeah, and we, we really hope you enjoyed touring round. It was just a bit of a whistle-stop tour. Yeah, and I think once we've got used to the boat, it's like moving into a new home, isn't it? You're looking for things and you can't find stuff because you've put it somewhere you can't remember where that is. But the natural light that comes into the boat and that sense of calmness on a day like this, when you're not in work and you're in beautiful countryside surroundings, yeah. it just feels amazing. I think this it? might be one of my favourite mornings, actually, where we are. Oh, yeah, we're in Napton at the oh, moment. This is a fabulous pub with like a little outside bit as well. Like it called the potting shed. Yeah, you've got the folly in the potting yeah, shed. Which you? that's only open a couple of a few days a week, yeah. not near the weekend. You've got a cidery, which is just brilliant. Um, a little cafe called Puddle Ducks. Oh yeah, the which staff is were a like really, really nice, yeah. really. Um, local store, so it's got everything, hasn't it? It's just yeah. like so. If we try to maximise the time we'd normally spend, yeah. 
haven't we? So we've been yeah. here just over a week. We're going to make a cruising plan for next week. Yeah. I think what we're trying to say in a nutshell, this boat is so different than the boat we had before. It's not just the fact that our last boat was 57 foot and this is 60 feet. There's so much technology on this boat, isn't it? You've got the lithium batteries, loads more solar. You've got an E-Line motor. We've got Google speakers. We've got an Echo Show. And sometimes those things don't work because the internet might crash and we're getting used to all those things. But when all those things do work, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, and like we said before, we, do, we are quite gadgety. Yeah, um, and a couple of our favourite times. We've had some really silent cruises on the boat, but a couple of my favourite nights, because you were away, unfortunately. It's not why they favourite no. nights. <laughs> it's a shame you weren't here. The subtle lighting on the boat in the evening is lovely. It's really relaxing space. Actually, we could probably show in. that, couldn't we? Yeah, we will. And But it's the skylights, and looking up at the blue sky and the white fluffy clouds, but one evening while Anthony was in work, it was a starlit sky, and I didn't want to go to bed. I just sat on the sofa looking up at the, the sky. Well, it was like last night. You could see the plow yeah. through that sky like that. Yeah. It was amazing. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you've got any questions, or there's anything that we've not covered in this video and you'd like to know, just drop your question in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. It's completely free, and it really does help our channel. Yeah. Please keep your comments coming. I'd love to read them and reply to them every week. Sometimes a little bit later than um, I would hope, but I always do get around to replying. Um, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and we shall see you on some silent cruises on the new boat. Yeah, so. make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss our future videos. Yeah, Thanks care. for watching. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.